So this is problem number two from the 2022 AP Statistics exam. And in this question, we are dealing with experimental design. So they talk about a dermatologist. They're going to be conducting an experiment to see how well a new acne medication performs. They recruit 36 pairs of identical twins. Each person in the experiment has acne, and each person in the experiment will receive either the new drug or a placebo. After each person in the experiment uses either the new drug or the placebo for two weeks, the dermatologist is going to evaluate the improvement of their acne severity on a scale from 0 to 100. Uh, so in part A, we're asked to identify the treatments, the experimental units, and the response variable of the experiment. So the, the treatments should be pretty obvious. There are two different groups. People in the first group are going to receive the new medication, and people in the other group are going to receive the placebo. The experimental units. Uh, so I've, I've got a few different ways to kind of hash this out. I, I feel like both would receive full credit. And so for this first one that we're going to discuss here, uh, I've said the experimental units are the 36 pairs of identical twins. And then I've denoted that one twin is going to be assigned to each treatment. Just based on how this is set up, it kind of seems that's the intention. You know, why don't you just recruit 72 people to, to test this medication and the placebo with? Why do they have to be identical twins? Well, it, it seems to make sense that the twins are going to be similar to each other and, and they want one twin to receive the medication, one twin to receive the treatment. So I said the experimental units are the 36 pairs of identical twins, and we're specifically going to assign one twin to each of the treatments, one twin from each pair to each treatment. Uh, and then what we're going to be analyzing is the response variables. We're going to be analyzing the difference in acne improvement rating from the medication to the placebo within each set of twins. So we'll be directly comparing how well the medication performed against the placebo within a set of twins and looking at the difference, uh, not just the general improvement rating. The other way that I, I feel like you could interpret this would be like you see on this screen. Uh, so the treatments don't change, the new medication and the placebo. Experimental units would be the 72 people who are assigned these treatments. And then the response variable would be the acne improvement rating on a scale from 0 to 100. Uh, if, if they hadn't specifically said that we recruited 36 pairs of identical twins to, to do this, if it was just 72 people, then this would definitely be the way to go. I, I feel like you'd still receive full credit if you went this route. Uh, if you did do go with the matched pairs description, which is basically what I was explaining initially, you definitely need to make sure that your response variable is the difference within a pair, right? The difference in improvement rating from medication to placebo within each individual set of twins. Now, what they talk about in part B here uh, is the fact that each twin has a severity of acne similar to that of the other twin. That kind of makes sense. We, we, I guess, could have assumed that, and we kind of did when we were talking about part A. However, the severity of acne differs from one twin pair to another, and that makes sense too. So they say that the dermatologist's experiment, we want to try to talk about a statistical advantage of using a matched pairs design where the twins are paired rather than using a completely randomized design. So the completely randomized design, this would be the, the set of experimental units in the response variable, but the matched pairs design uh, is what we were talking about initially, and that's right here. So the I think we've kind of already done a little bit of this discussion throughout what we were talking about in part A, but since each twin is going to have acne severity similar to that of their twin, uh, and also a similar genetic makeup, we should get better results by intentionally pairing the twins with each other and looking at the difference in the acne improvement rating. Uh, one of the things that you see I've mentioned here is you know genetic makeup could be a potential confounding variable. So if, if a certain set of twins has a genetic makeup that allows the medication to be more effective, you wouldn't want both of those twins to be in the medication group because then the results would indicate that the medication is actually more effective than it, act, than it really is. But if you pair the twins and assign one from each set to each treatment and you analyze the difference, and there you see that's the key word again, we're analyzing the difference in improvement rating within each pair, the medication's effectiveness is likely to be more apparent because 
each pair, similar acne severity, similar starting point. If the medication works, we should see different ending points. Uh, and then also the genetic makeup's the same, right? We, sh we should mitigate that as a possible confounding variable. Then the last part of this question, they say that we want to talk about how we can randomly assign the people using a matched pairs randomly assign the treatments to these people using a matched pairs design in which the twins are paired. Now, there are a variety of ways to do this. Uh, if you're going with a random number generator, uh, some sort of technology, you have to be very, very specific and, and make sure you lay out all the details. I, I think, in general, the easiest way to randomize is the old school method of putting names on pieces of paper and drawing from a hat. Now I do have to make sure that I, I describe this in, in fairly decent detail. So for the first set of twins, we're gonna place each person's name on a piece of paper and place those pieces of paper into a hat. We're gonna blindly draw one of the two names from the hat. The person whose name is selected will receive the new medication. The person who did not have their name drawn is gonna receive the placebo. We're going to repeat this process for each set of twins so that one twin from each pair receives the medication and one receives the placebo. Again, it's not the only way to satisfy the requirements for Part C, but I think this is the, the, the quickest, most efficient way to talk about how to randomize the assignment of the treatments. If you're flipping coins, random number generator, uh, random list of digits, string of digits, things like that, those are options, but they require a little bit more description and, and detail than what you see I've gotten away with here in my drawing pieces of paper from a hat. So that is number two from the 2022 AP Stats exam.